So I'm doing a little bit more work on the Vectrix here. Uh, yesterday I tried uh, to do kind of a bulk charge on the batteries. Uh, I used a big dumb brute charger to get it started and then kicked over to using a little uh, uh, kind of an RC charger. Um, when I came in, it was up to the full voltage being put out by the charger, but I turned it off, checked all the cells, and most of them were at 1.3 volts, but there were a couple that were at essentially zero. So it looks like uh, just on the, the top layer of cells in these two packs, I've got uh, two bad cells over here and four bad cells over there. And this is three layers deep. I'm just haven't even opened these up, just looking at the top layer. So uh, just based on that, I'm guessing I've also got some bad cells uh, in the other two layers. So things don't look good for reusing the original uh, nickel cells. Of course, most guys who've, who've done work upgrading Vectrixes say, uh, heck with it, just go to lithium anyways. Um, I don't have lithium, but I do have uh, some spare nickel cells. Of course, they're a different type and all, but let's take a quick look at those. So I do have a number of these six volt uh, nickel metal hydride sticks from a, from a uh, Ford Escape hybrid. Um, they're only rated for five and a half amp hour capacity on them. Uh, but I have gone through, I've charged all these up. Right here I have a 48 volt pack that I built for uh, testing in my Kawasaki with the original idea of basically having six of these running in parallel as a new battery pack for that bike. But then I uh, came across the Vectrix here and I thought, aha, uh -huh, maybe I could use these. So it looks like since the, um, the nickel cells are probably shot, what I might do is just uh, rig enough of these up in series uh, to see if I can use that to jumpstart the system, just uh, power it on. And inside the Vectrix, I was able to get the cover off. I still think it's a pretty bad design, the way the cables go through and how you have to undo things. Because even though it's disconnected, it's still held on by the battery cables and just, yeah. It's a little goofy, not perfect, but um, the good news is the controller itself uh, looks really, really good. There's no corrosion, there's no heat damage, it looks basically brand new. Um, I did test for continuity on the uh, main fuse down there. Uh, main fuse is not blown, so that's always a good sign too. Uh, so overall, it looks really good. So I'm thinking what I might do is put the cover back on, plug in all the connections, and then uh, basically jumper cable, um, a battery pack that I make from those nickel sticks, um, just right up to the uh, battery cables over here, of course, uh, running them through a pre-charge resistor. And then uh, maybe I can get the bike to power on just by doing that. So I'm going to keep tinkering on this project, and if I get the bike to power up off of those uh, Ford Escape hybrid cells, I'll make sure to let you know. Uh, tune in next time. Uh, subscribe or check this project out over at 300mpg.org. Thanks a lot.